progress. Well, good evening, everyone. And even though it's not Sabbath yet, it will be eventually. And so happy Sabbath. And uh, I invite you all to kneel with me in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for the fellowship that we can have, for the things that you have shown us, um, for the understanding that comes from a study of your word and a submission to your spirit that we can learn in the school of Christ. And um, we ask, Lord, that um, you can be with us now as we continue to examine uh, the issues that are before us, the time that we are in, and as we seek your presence through the types and symbols of prophecy. We just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can work upon our hearts. You know the needs that exist within each person's life, whether they're physical, spiritual, or other types of needs that we have, worries and concerns. And so we just ask, Lord, that you can be with each one, that your angels can watch over us, and that we can trust in your leading and guidance. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. And um, the study tonight might be a little bit scattered because there's a few different things that I want to look at. Um, but th there's a couple of things that have been noted. So one of the things we've noticed is that Roe versus Wade was overturned today. And um, which I think is significant in its timing, uh, the symbols of it. It's how many years? 50, isn't it? 49 years. Four. Yeah. Plus, I think it was 153 days. And 153 days, correct. So 49 years and 153 days. So we have a symbol uh, that comes from. Uh, of course, the 70 week prophecy or, you know, the Jubilee cycle, uh, etc. So it, it's kind of interesting in that way. And, and there's a little bit more detail involved in it, which um, I don't think we need to go to into at this point, we will in one of our other studies, I think. But it, it's just interesting, we can have these events that are these types of way marks that are symbol that are tied to these symbols. For me personally, uh, my son yesterday signed uh, uh, a sales agreement for the guitar store. So he sold the guitar store that I work at that I started uh, in July of uh, 2000. And the sale goes through. It, it's kind of a bit tricky because July 1st here is Canada Day. So uh, technically the year end for the business is, is June 30th. Um, so the contract, even though it's kind of for July 1st, it, it would follow on the next business day, which is going to be July 4th. But um, when I started my business in 2000, it was July 1st was when I had access to uh, the building that I had leased. And um, but that was a Sabbath. So I didn't uh, open the store until July 2nd, which is the middle day of the year. But that was 22 years ago. So it's going to be basically 22 years to the day uh, that the store, from when the store opened um, uh, to when the store is sold. So I thought that was rather interesting. And um, so, of course, 22 is a symbol of restoration. But I guess for me, I guess I'm going to be restored um, as having a bit more freedom. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know how the business owners are going to uh, run the business, but I, I'm praying that things will work out. Um, now, we have a number of things that have been drawing our attention this past week. And I have in front of you on, on the screen, um, this is just a diagram which uh, was the basis of yesterday morning study. 
So yesterday morning we had take, taken Parminder's reform line, and which I believe is a zoom into the arrival of the second angel's message, that is 9-11. Um, but it's a counterfeit reform line. That is, it's based upon true waymarks, uh, but Parminder is a false prophet. That is, he's teaching wrong principles. And the question is, and, and when I asked the question, I know people didn't have much time to think about it, um, but the idea that we can have a reform line that contains Parminder is that um, is that something that we can agree upon, even though what he was teaching was error, and that it ties in with our reform lines? So, does anybody have thoughts on that? Can we can we see that a reform line can exist for a person who who is actually teaching error? Yeah, so the papacy has more than one, but they definitely do have some reform lines. So we would look at a reform line at the beginning of the papacy, dealing with um, a time of the end, which would be uh, connected with 538. We could also connect maybe 508 with that. Um, and, and they have this counterfeit reform line. And there's different ways people have constructed it. Uh, we also see that the papacy has a counterfeit reform line dealing with um, uh, the Fatima prophecy. So they have things that that counterfeit, and some of those waymarks line up with our waymarks. That is, for us, they're a waymark, but they're also a waymark for the papacy and in in bringing about the end of the Soviet Union. So so we can have that. So. When it comes to Parminder's reform line, there's already waymarks in that reform line that we have recognized as these waymarks. For instance, October 13th, 2018, when I'm at Lambert Church and they're presenting the message regarding November 9th, um, that's 391 and a half days to November 9th, and I give witness to that, we recognize that as the midnight cry. But what we didn't really understand is what line it's a part of. And we would then look at, um, so they would have just looked at it as the midnight cry. They would have looked at midnight as actually being 2014. But here, this is a zoom into a waymark. And maybe, maybe it's even a zoom into a waymark within another reform line that we don't have here. Um, that is... We could look at this as a zoom in. I look at it as a zoom into 2014. And 2014 is a symbol of sunset, which is parallel to, to April 19th, 1844, which is sunset. So when I look at this reform line here of Parminder's, to me, that is this waymark here, the arrival of the second angel which is sunset because we know in Millerite history, April 19th is sunset. That is, it's the arrival of the second angel's message. And we mark that as being fulfilled at 9-11. And we also have 9-11 that is parallel with August 11th, 1840. So we have this. And what do I have up here? So some of the stuff I didn't end up fixing so this is completely wrong up at top here so this is supposed to be april 19th i was doing some other things so and then it, and this is 1844 so sorry about that whoops so and that's not the time of the end there we go and this, of course, isn't 1833. This is um, midnight, which is going to be um, July 21st. And this is going to be the midnight cry, which is August 15. 
Yes, I can do an abbreviation. So, so sorry about that. Capitalize And this is going to be. Um, so I'm going to put this here. This is going to have this period here. What did you say? You made a comment. Capitalize the C in uh, Midnight Cry. Okay. okay, I will. And then you're going to have this 1,533 days here. Yeah, I, I, I just started working on this, and I didn't finish it, so I apologize. And, yeah, it's a midnight cry. I need that capital. Okay. So, so this is the line which we look at at the Miller Rights Reform line. Um, and then here, this would be our line. And when we have midnight and the midnight cry here, I don't have them marked as a time because I believe those are still future. And I, and I can't predict future events. So my understanding is that we're in a history that's leading up to midnight. And um, so the other thing here with these two 9-11s, we know it's one event, but it has two different purposes. And this has always confused people when I do this. But we would have to say that um, these are combined, but 9-11 as the empowerment of the first angel's message is definitely a different way mark than 9-11 being the arrival of the second angel's message. So we still haven't sorted out that out, why we have these two 9-11s. We don't just bring them together to be uh, one event. We, we, you know, like to be, you know, it's just 9-11. We have to separate them out as being two different waymarks, even though they're one event. But we can see in Parminder's reform line. So when we go through Parminder's reform line, the time of the end is this period of darkness. The darkness would be no time prophecy. And Parminder is a proclaiming prophet and a gathering prophet because he's the one who, who gives us these 126 shekels and 151 shekels going from uh, 1863 and 1888, where here the 126 shekels is going from 1863 to 1989. Here we're going to have them coming to 2014. And when 2014 passes, we recognized that even though there wasn't a Sunday law that Parminder predicted, it still became a waymark. Now, what I'm doing is I'm marking this as the time of the end, which Jeff did. So some of this reform line Jeff had done already. That is, he recognized these two time prophecies, and he made 2014 a time of the end. I don't know if anybody remembers those presentations. And, and then we have the formalization of the message. And you can see here in Millerite history, this is when uh, William Miller on September 14th, 1833 is ordained as a Baptist minister. On February 27th, 2016, Parminder is ordained. And then you can see here, of course, August 11th, 1840 lines up with 9-11 as the empowerment of the first angel's message. And for Parminder, that's going to be 2017. And that's when they begin this work of organization. Now, this is the, the Italy camp meeting. And so there's this 9-11 prayer, closing Pentecost and opening Sabbath. And sun sets at 9-11. And it's after a presentation, which I believe was an hour and 20 minutes, not 120 minutes. But 120 is a symbol of... Pentecost, so an hour and 20, even though it's 80 minutes, is still a symbol. And then we're going to have his second 9-11 is going to be marking the end of this camp meeting in 2018 in Italy as well. And there's another 9-11 prayer of Jeff's. And that's going to mark the beginning of 126 days going to October 13th. And so we can see these two 9-11s here and their symbolism are tied up with the symbolism here. So we can see that Parminder's line, or this line, however we want to understand it, 
is tied to Parminder's time setting. And so time setting arrives in this movement at the beginning of this 126 days. It's actually going to be the next day that Parminder presents the time setting argument, but it's it's marked by this uh, 9-11 prayer. And then we have midnight. So midnight, July 21st, which is Boston. And that is going to be parallel to Tess's two presentations entitled 10 Years and another presentation entitled The Midnight Cry. And that's going to be on October 3rd. It's on a Wednesday. And 10 days later, I'm going to be at Lambert Church when Daniel from Brazil, who made a prediction about these 126 days, is presenting uh, time setting, the November 9th, 2019 date. And uh, I'm counting at noon, October 13th, 391.5 days to November 9th, 2019. And so I'm recognizing the tie to Ezekiel's prophecy as well as the prophecy of Josiah Litch, Revelation 9. And later we're going to come up with July 18th, but at that time we just have this November 9th, which they're going to claim is a close of probation, which would line up with the Sunday law and October 22nd, 1844. So it's it's a very neat line and how it fits together with these other lines. And when we did this on Thursday morning, um, I had just woken up and thought about this from the beginning, and I knew I could construct this line. But this line just fell into place already because it was just something that was already there. I just knew the line was there. Um, so any thoughts about this line of Parminder? I, I'm, I'm going to put this together into a paper and uh, send it out when I have time. But um, any thoughts on it? I know it's not part of this study dealing with 2030, but it is in an indirect way. There's still a lot that I've got to consider on this. Yeah. Okay. What what kind of things is there something particularly that troubles you or no just different things I'm look that I've got to look at oh, okay okay so um, and and one of the things here too when we we have Parminder's ordination that this this comes from our study dealing with um, these spans of time that Odilio was dealing with coming from the numbering of the tribes of Israel. So this is the number uh, that comes from uh, the tribe of Dan. That is, if we go here, I think I have it here somewhere. Um, yeah, so it's going to be, yeah. So if we go from November 4th, 1888, so... I don't see that I have it here. Um, where did I put that? Ah, here it is. Um, so this, no, it's not from November 4th, but I get all these numbers all mixed up. So this doesn't make sense here. Oh, so that's not the right one either. Here it is. There it is. So I'm just going to go into the bottom right corner here. So I showed this last week, um, but, the, but not everybody would have seen it. So we remember that Odilio had addressed the number of the tribe of Zebulun, and he counted all these dates back from July 18th, these spans of time. Right? So this was last Friday's study. And he counted for Zebulun, there's 57,400 men who are going to be able to go to war and he takes those as days and that's going to bring us back to may 23rd 1863 the last day of the organizational camp meeting where the seventh-day adventist church officially became a denominated people 
right? So we we now we're a, a denomination legally, and and we're going to have the uh, the church organized at that time. Now, if we go to the next major camp meeting here, is we're going to look at that Parminder used. So remember, Parminder used 1863 to count both 126 she shekels to November 9th, 2019, 126 years, and 151 shekels from 1863 uh, to 2014. Now, he also had 126 then from the 1888 camp meeting, or uh, general conference to 2014 as well. So the fact that we can now go to the last day of that general conference session in 1888 and count from the tribe of Reuben, so this is the one from Reuben, um, 46,500 days. And the reason we used Reuben is Reuben is a man. That's his, his banner, symbolizes human reasoning. He's actually the head of a man. And that's going to go to Parminder's ordination on February 27th, 2016. And then we're going to have 1,279 days to August 29th, 2019, Parminder's Rebellion. And that's going to be parallel to the rebellion at Baal Peor. So there's a whole bunch of connections that in our morning studies we're going to be addressing, because right now we're dealing with Parminder's Rebellion. And we're going to look at Baal Peor again, uh, etc. So, uh, and you can also see that symbol of 46,500 days, if you take it one hundredth of that, it's 465. And from August 29th, 2019, um, this is going to be 465 days to December 6, 2020, when the declaration uh, was, was published, uh, where basically people accepted the, the arguments of Parminder. Now, I also have another thing to look at. So again, this doesn't directly address 2030, but it addresses this chronology that is connected to 2030. And this has to do with the papacy, uh, particularly the time of the end in 1798 and its connection uh, to our time. So what I want to do here is... Okay, so there's some interesting things that we're going to look at here. I'm going to share um, the calendar converter. Now, I need to zoom it in so people can see it, and that's always a problem. But we have the table down here. Now, one of the things we want to look at is uh, Pope Pius II. Does anybody know when he was born? So he's going to be the Pope at the time of the end. So when was he born? Okay, he's born December 25th. Now, that, that is sig significant. Now, the year it's going to be is 1717. So we'll put that in here. December 25th. Okay, so now it's down on our table there. And he's he's going to become, I'm going to get rid of some of these things. They're not related to what we're doing. So get rid of that one. Most of these things here are, well, actually, I'll just get rid of all of them. And I'll, um, and then I'll say this one again. So we got, we're going to start with this date, December 25th, 1717. And, and the reason why we're going through this is one is we're going to see that there are some interesting patterns and structures that are going to relate to the chronology of 2030. And, and I think it will be helpful for people to go through this. Um, I'm just going to make this bigger. I keep doing the wrong thing. Okay. It's maybe too big, but 
And why do I have it show up three times? Okay, let's do this again. Let's get it back here. Sorry about that. Clear, save. There we go. We just got, we need one of those. Um, now, let's look at um, when does the Pope become uh, the Pope? So obviously he wasn't born as Pope. Anybody know? Maybe it's in the chat there. No, it's not there. Okay, 215. So it's going to be February 15th, uh, 1775. So we'll put that in there. So we're going to... It's going to be February 15th, and that's an interesting date for Pope Pius. Um, now, if you look at the number of days, what, what do you see between the number of days of his birth to the time when he becomes Pope? You, can you see that? I can make it a bit bigger. Okay, yeah, so 20,871. Now, it's not, it, it's all of the numbers of July 1820, right? They're not in the correct order, but we also have seen that 871 is a symbol of July 18th, and we have the 20 at the beginning. So, so we can see just in the birth of the Pope, and when he becomes Pope, we have the symbols for July 18, 2020. Can everybody see that? Anybody have a question? Because remember, if you have a question, somebody watching the video later who can't ask me might have been asked thinking the same question. I, I don't see the 2020. How, how are you picking that up? Okay, so when we have um, 18720, that's July, that's the 18th of July, 20. Oh. <laughs> So you have the five digits that we use. Sometimes we just use the four. Right order, that's all. Yeah, they're just arranged in a different order. Okay. Okay, I get it. All right, I see it now. Okay. Now the Pope has some other interesting dates. So, I mean, in order to become a Pope, what has to happen first? Uh, three uh, instances of miracles, or something like that. No, you know, uh, another I mean, pope has to die. Okay, a pope has to die, but that's, I, I never thought about what, figuring out when the other pope died. I, I need to look at that. Um, but you, first you have to become what? I mean, Catholic, you know, you need to be Catholic. Uh, but what's, what's, what's the last thing that you need to become? I mean, you have to be a priest, but what also do you have to be to be a pope? Who do they choose the pope from? Bishops? Cardinals. Cardinal. Cardinal. Yeah. So um, he became cardinal on April 26th, 1773. So he'd only been a cardinal uh, for less than two years. So in 1773, April 26th. So April 26th, of course, we know is a symbol of July 18, 2020. Now, that's going to be 666, 660 days. It would have been better if it was 666 days, but, you know, that's the best we could do. 660 days is still a, a symbol that represents 666, being 66 times 10. Right? Agreed. So, yeah, so so pretty interesting symbols. Now, um, the Pope also is um, going to be taken captive. Now, we should all know that date. Um, 1798. Uh, yeah. So 1798. I don't remember the date. It's going to be his birthday. About 1225? 
So yeah. he, he's going to be 23. Uh, it, it's going to be 23 years. Um, pardon me. So, so one of the things you'll see is not his birthday. It's going to be the anniversary of him becoming Pope. So that is, he's going to be uh, a Pope for 23 years. You see that? Or 23 years till his captivity. So he's 23 years old when he's taken captive. Or not 23 years old. 23 years that he's been Pope. Okay? Right. That makes sense? Yes, better sense. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, so 23 years is 8,401 days. Um, and uh, we have some interesting symbols there, but I'm, I'm not going to go into those too much because they're a bit more obscure. Um, so, so he, and we know that he's going to die. Um, in 1799, on August 29th, right? So that's going to be uh, the next date that we would want to look at. And that's going to be um, another nice round number. It's five, 560 days uh, from the time that he's taken captive. Um, I, I, I got a question here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that third column, of one, two, three, the fourth column says 12, 15, 1798, but you said it was on his birthday, which is 12. Not 25. his birthday. No, no. Uh, the day he became Pope, right? So I, I miss oh, okay. I, I keep saying his birthday, but, you know, 23 years that he's been Pope. Okay. Okay. All right. I get it now. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, right. So, because he becomes Pope in, and is it 23 years or am I misstating that? Uh, 17. So that's going to be uh, 23 years from 1775 uh, to 1798. Now, another right. interesting thing is. Um, we have two people attached to the time of the end. Who else is attached to the time of the end? Because we got the Pope, but who else? Okay, Iran says Miller. Would we agree with that? Very much. Okay, so anybody know when Miller was born? So, as a round note, 1782. So we put that in there, and it's February 15th. So that's why I kept saying his birthday, because it's Miller's birthday, February 15th. All I can say is wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, Miller's year of birth. Um, is uh 1782 so that means he was 16 when the pope was taken captive yes yeah so he's going to be 16 years old right because he's 82 to 98 so he's 16. right when when he gets his credentials um in 1833 he's going to be 51. So some interesting things here. So we can see, uh, we take the Pope who has all of these symbols. He's got the December 25th symbol. He's got the 26th day of the fourth month, April 26th symbol. He's got symbols relating to July 18, 2020. He's got symbols related to 666. And he shares the same symbol, Miller's birthday, where Miller's going to be 16 when the Pope is taken captive. Uh, and these to me are pretty remarkable. <laughs> right, I, I think people can agree with that. 
I'm with the Wyatt. It's 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 wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so you know, when we do this now, somebody watching, like, you know, who doesn't know anything about this movement, I mean, may not understand what we're doing. They could just think, well, you have tons of symbols and numbers, and and so almost anything you can do uh, is going to work out in this way. But one is with all things we've already established. And these symbols are well established and well connected to each other. So, you know, the December 25th date, we know in 508 now that that's when uh, Clovis was baptized, right? So that's going to be marked at the beginning of the 1260. You know, it's 30 years before the 1260 starts, but in a, in a time connected to that, that 30 year period, 508, uh, starting the 1290 and the 1335. And then you're going to have a pope who's born on December 25th. Um, and then he's going to have um, the date of his becoming uh, the pope and the date of his captivity uh, tied up with um, the prophet at that end time, William Miller. And, and then all these different symbols. So this isn't just something that's contrived. And, and and believe me, I, I've looked at other just random sort of things where you try to, you know, just put a bunch of different birthdays and stuff. You don't end up with these kinds of structures um, uh, just from random things. They have to be tied together. In order for this kind of yeah, it would, it, well, it'd be highly unlikely. And definitely once you look at everything together, it would be impossible to have happened by chance. But somebody just looking at this can say, well, you also have dates and numbers that don't seem to be significant. So the fact that you create some numbers that are significant and other ones that aren't, you're just picking and choosing. But actually, um, these are all significant. They're just significant in different ways, and some of them would take longer explanations. And some are necessary in order for any of these significant numbers to arise. So, so that would be a, a part of that. Now, um, yeah, so Clovis' baptism to the Pope birth was 1,209 years, similar to the 1290. So that's interesting as well. So the 1290 is going to end in 1798, right? And it's going to begin in 508. And so we take that December 5th uh, date and we... We, so that means since 1290 and uh, 1209, so that means there's 81 years difference. And that's because the Pope was 81 when he was taken captive, I believe it is. That makes sense. So um, was he 80? He's 81 when he dies. He was 80 when he was taken captive. And are 80 and 81 a symbol? Okay, Iran says yes, and what do they do? What, where does the symbol come from? Anybody? Dwight? Does anybody know how to explain that symbol? It relates to the priesthood. The priesthood, so you have 80 priests and also a high priest, which is 81, right? Right. And and doesn't it relate also to Ellen White? That, Ellen that's did... what I was thinking, because the 80, when she was 81, wasn't that the worst general conference session of her life? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to, I don't know exactly how old she was. Uh, so... For some reason, I can't keep every single number in my head. But if somebody can figure what? that out, I can't. What? <laughs> Since when? I can't. I can't remember everything, but I, I can remember a large number of numbers, but not every number. But anyway, I know you're mocking me. But anyhow, um, so so we can see here what we have right now: some interesting figures, and. Um, I'm trying to remember all the other things that I had noticed. Um, so the Pope was Pope for 23 years. That would end, that would deal with 
the symbol of the 2300 days. Um, December 25th, 1717, there's something about that. I can't remember what the 1717 symbolized. I mean, other than a doubling. Um, oh, so now this relates to our study, so I'm just going to go back here. Uh, just so you have some visual things to look at. So when we had this study dealing with these tokens and harbingers and signs, um, so we have these dates. May 19th becomes a symbol, 1780. That's going to be the dark day. Um, November 13th, 1833. And we know that in 1833, um, Miller is going to be ordained. Now, if we were to count, so I'm just going to go back. I just wanted you to see that. Now, if we go back from Miller's birthday, so he's born in 1782, and I'm just going to type in this number, 18720, I'm going to come to 1833. But the date I come to is not the date of his ordination, which is September 14th. 1833, or the date of the falling of the stars, which is November 13th, 1833. But I'm going to come to a symbol that we have with the dark day. That is, it's going to be May 19th, 1833. So that happens to be 18,720 days old uh, when Miller, uh, if from a, a May 19th. Now, May 19th, 1833 isn't anything other than a symbol. And it's a symbol of the dark day. So that is, it's an anniversary of the dark day. Now, the dark day happened in, in 1780. So how many years would that be? So it's it's 53 years after the dark day, right? So, so whether how we want to understand that, you know, it's not a significant symbol, but it is 53 years after the dark day. I didn't put the dark day in here, but we know that Miller's going to be, you know, he's he's born basically two years after the dark day, not quite, less than two years. Um. So, um, when when he is ordained later in that year in 1833 um, he's not yet going to be 52 years old he's still going to be 51 so so he turns 51 in february of 1833 so may is um you know it's about three months and uh four days but you know february has less days. There's a whole bunch of things I could look at, but I, I don't want to, just because they, they get a little bit esoteric here. But uh, but the main point here is that you can see this 18720 ties us to a symbol or an anniversary of some event. And, and the same thing happened when I counted the 18,720 days from my birthday that became a significant uh, anniversary, but also a way mark um, in our lines. So um, I don't know if I want to go too deep into this because there's more that I could show you. But but I think it's sufficient here to see that we have this this symbol or this connection. Now the other thing that was rather interesting for me is um, dealing with the week of Christ. So the significant way mark that we have dealing with the week, uh, dealing um, with the time of the end. What's the time of the end? So we're going to tie the time of the end in Millerite history with the time of the end in our history. So what's the date of the time of the end in our history? We know that's going to be uh, 1989. It's going to be November November 9th, right? 1989. So um, 
So we're going to put that here, and then we're going to look at something that results from this. Now, um, so what we have is this period of time, which is from Miller's birth. So no, we're not marking from the time of the end. We're not going to mark from February 16th, 1798, but we're just going to go to Miller's birth in 1782. And we're going to count that span of time to November 9th, 1989. Now, this is a period of time which um, is interesting. So it's 75,872 days, right? Is that correct? Did I look at the right one? So that's how many days from Miller's birth, who's the prophet of the time of the end in 1798, to the time of the end in our time. And if I divide that number by the length of a month, which is 29.530587 days, I get a number which is 2,569. So what is the number 2,569? Anybody know? That's seven times plus 49, which is a Jubilee. Right, so the week of Christ, it's the length of the covenant week, as Iran says. So when we go from the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD, marking Christ's baptism, to the 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD, marking the stoning of Stephen, it's 25,000, uh, 2,569 days. So it's 2520 plus a uh, cycle of uh, Pentecost, 49 days. You can count it inclusively as 50 days, but and, and we can count the whole period as 2570 if we're counting the first and last day together. But just counting cardinally from the 10th day of the seventh month, seven years later, isn't going to be 2520 days. It's going to be 2569 days. And so the number of months uh, here to from Miller's birth to the time of the end in 1989 is this symbol. And this ties us to the week of Christ. Now, in, in some ways, this is a, what's that? What was the symbol again, please? What was the number? 2569. Okay, thank you. So that's the number of days. Um, so I'm just gonna find it here on my other. Right, so if I just, so you can see it visually, people can see what I'm talking about. This here is the week of Christ. You can see we got uh, the 10th day of the seventh month in 27 AD, which is September 30th, and the 10th day of the seventh month in 34 AD. And if you count the actual days from the 10th day of the seventh month to the 10th day of the seventh month, it's uh, it's really hard to see here. Let's just do it like this. Oh, that's not working. It's not filling in properly, but anyway, it's 2569. I know it's really hard to see in this. If I zoom in, maybe you can see that better. There you go. 2569 days. So it's that many months from Miller's birth to um uh, that uh, that date, November 9th, 1989. And th those are lunar months, you know, not not prophetic months. And so you can see it here. Very as well. interesting catch. Yeah. Well, what it's doing is it's tying the time of the end in 1798, the prophet there, with the time of the end in our history. Now, one of the things that, that we looked at, so I'm, I'm going over some things that we had done before, but 
This goes back to the structural chiasm that Stephen and I had discovered in 2016. And, and this came from a study on the story of Joseph, and uh, which was Johannes Koletsky's study. Uh, but Johannes Koletsky did not have the chronology of the Bible to help him. That is, he could have the 2520, um, that structure, and the 21260s, et cetera. But what he didn't have, and, and he was doing this study on the, on the story of Joseph, the chronology of Joseph. And what he couldn't do is he couldn't, he couldn't place exactly when Joseph's history occurred. He didn't know, right? Um, but when we had looked at this, so I had worked out this chronology, and Johannes Koletsky had noticed this period of 17,064 years, going from 34 AD to 1798, as being a week of plenty. That is, or not a week of plenty, a week of famine, because this is the plenty and the famine. And so this is the week of famine, and it's, it's a week of 252 years for each day. And so from 34 AD to 538 is two times 252. And from 538 to 1798 is five times 52. And Stephen just asked the question, what if you count backwards from 34 AD? And we came to the date where um, Joseph blesses his 12 sons. And then there's 252 years to the completion of the story of Joshua and possessing the land and having rest from their enemies. Then there's three times 252 to 723 BC when Hoshea is taken captive and the 2520 for Northern Israel commences. And then there's another three times 25, 756 years to 34 AD. So, so this structural chiasm we noticed. Now we also had something, a, an artifact of this, this chiasm. 12 sons at the age of 147, equals 1764 for Jacob's blessing. So if you take, Jacob is 147 years old when he blesses his son, when he dies, and there's 12 sons, so 12 times 147 equals 1764. So thanks for reminding us, us of that, Haran. So, so it's a very significant symbol. But now what we also have is when, um, Abraham leaves Haran, 1963 BC, and we have a period of 232 years. Now, what the week of Christ study, which we've just been referenced because of Miller, what the week of Christ study gave us was this date 2030 as the first day of the first month. And, you know, we're struggling here with, with understanding what this future date can mean. We can understand it as a symbol but we're not predicting anything. And, and this study, and, and tomorrow we're going to look at, um, tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, my time, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some more of this information about the World Economic Forum and what their plan is for 2030. And now we could just say it's arbitrary that we have this 2030 attached to, I mean, they could have chose... 2040, you know, and, and other times they've had different years. So it just happens now that they're choosing 2030 as this future date when they're going to bring about, you know, this wonderful utopia of socialistic uh, uh, economy that's going to be just so wonderful, right, where everybody's going to own nothing and be happy about it. So um, but we know that that's a symbol. So whether it's it's literally 2030 that something happens we don't know, but what we do know is that 2030 relates to our time now because we can see that the pandemic that we've experienced is tied up symbolically um, with this 2030 date and that this 2030 date is supposed to be speaking to this movement about our message. And um, so we're, we're going to address that again tomorrow afternoon. But that's why I'm just right now looking at this chronology. And so I just found it interesting that in examining the time of the end, and the time of the end is what date? 
what what is the symbol of um, of the time of the end? What, what 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 is it that we use to symbolize it? I mean, that's a really broad question because we have seventeen ninety eight. We got February fifteenth. Now, February 15th is what date or what day of the year is it? Depending on how you look at it, it could be the 46th day of the year. Right. So it's the 46th day of the year. That is, you have 31 days in January and 15 plus 31 is 46. And so, yeah, so we have a, what's that? The reason I said, depending on how you look at it, that's the inclusive way. If you look at it, counting it the other way, it's the 45th day of the year. Right. So a cardinal count is 45 days. An ordinal count is 46. It's the 46th day. Inclusively, we would just say it's 46 days from the beginning of the year. That would be inclusive, right? Ordinal, we use the TH at the end. Okay, so now we also have February 16th, and February 16th is Samuel Snow's letters. Now, February 16th is the 46th it's day if you're counting cardinally, right? So it's 46 days from January 1st when Samuel Snow first decides that he's going to uh, be presenting that Jesus is coming back in the fall. And so it's going to be 46 days later, but that's a cardinal count, right? That is, we're not counting January 1st as one, we're counting it as zero. So January 2nd would be one day, right? And, and January 3rd, two days, and you'd count all the way through. So it's a cardinal count. So can we say that February 15th and February 16th represent the same symbol? Yes. And that they can represent the time of the end in a reform line. Yes. Okay. So, so that's one of the things that we we can recognize, um, which becomes important as we continue to look at this chronology, because February sixteenth shows up again and again um, in in the understanding of this chronology of twenty thirty. Now. The other thing, of course, is this 232 years. So, so we have these, these symbols of 232. Now, 232, we don't really look at it as a symbol so much. It's just a span of time from 1963 BC to Jacob blessing his 12 sons. Um, but we had 2030 as a symbol which came from the week of Christ as the first day of the first month. That is, 2030 was the th first day of the first month. Right, when we went backwards. So uh, Ron Knight says, 46 number of years, Herod's temple built, yeah. And 46 millers, millers were built up in spiritual house, yeah. So, so we know the symbol of 46. It's going to go from 1798 to 1844. But it also has a 45 in there because you can first go to 1843. That's what's on the chart. So we can see that 45 and 46 are the same symbol. Repeat that last part. Well, 45 and 46 are the same symbol. Yeah. So in, on the 1843 chart, it goes 1798 to, to 1843, where they first thought the prophetic periods ended. So that 45 days is the same symbol as the 46. Okay. They're tied together. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Now, so we already had 2030 from the week of Christ study. That is, we kept counting the days back going from, you know, because we're counting the years going from right to left. And when we get to 2030, it lines up with the first day of the first month in 27 AD. and I'm not going to go through that study right now, but the thing is, once I had recognized this 2030 date, 
and the connection of the 232 years from 1798. That's when I first started looking seriously at 2030. So I see these 232, because Stephen Jameson had drawn out this with the 232 on this end, and I just said, well, if I put the 232 here, I get this 2030, and I already have that date, I just have ignored it. Now, what I've done here, just below this, is I've counted the time from 1963 BC, 393 years, to 2030. And I'm going to count from the first day of the first month. Um, and when we count um, a period of 187 Islamic years, that is, those are lunar years, that is, a year is 12, 12 lunar months, um, it brings me to uh, the 10th day of the sixth month in 1872 BC. So it takes me to 1872, so 1872. So it's, it's kind of interesting, those. Plus, we also have all these 187s. So we know in the story of Joseph, there's the 22 years from his first dream to the fulfillment, and it's split in the middle with the dreams of the butler and the baker. So here I have 11 periods of 187, 11 times 187, right? And then here I have 11 times 187 on the other side. And that ties 1863 to 2030. So this, this becomes fairly significant in, in these structures that we have. Now, it's also um, 187, if you're going to look at the number of months, um, 1,414 lunar years is 49,368 months or 187 times 264. So if I take all the months in these 187 years and I multiply it by 12, it's going to give me, because it's 187 times 22 times 12. So 187 times 22 times 12 is going to give me 49,368 months. And that number of months, if divided by 264, um, is going to give me 187. So, so we have the symbol of July 18th and the symbol of 264. That is, you're going to have... Um, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. That's probably the best way to explain it. I don't want to confuse you. Well, it so, was the 26th day of the fourth month in 2020. Um, yeah, so the 26th day of the fourth month in 2020, exactly. So that's July 18th. It's tied to that symbol. That's, that's how we arrived at July 18th, was looking at the symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. So, so I, I think it would be hard at least for me, to take this structure here and just dismiss it based upon everything that we already know. That is, these are the main symbols here that we use to arrive at July 18th. And if somebody accepts July 18th and they accept the structure of the story of Joseph, if they accept the week of Christ study, if they accept these structural chiasms that tie together these histories, I don't think that we can just dismiss this as um, somebody setting things off too far into the future. There was a suggestion in one of the studies last Sabbath that, and, and I'm not sure if they were really directly relating to this, but they were sort of saying we need to be looking at the Sunday law. This is just a very paraphrased. We need to be looking at the events right now. We can't be looking at events far off in the future. So some people would look at 2030 as just um, a peace and safety message. Oh, the Sunday law is not coming in 2022. It's going to come in 2030. You can just relax, take it easy. Now, is it a peace and safety message that we're giving right now when we look at 2030?
How would we defend that? That from the patterns that we are seeing, that it's not unlike what we see in Genesis dealing with the flood. And it's not unlike the 490 weeks of Daniel 9. Okay, so, and, and, and we're not even saying that we're, something's happening in 2030, right? So we're not even saying that, you know, we're looking to 2030 now and we're, we're dismissing what's happening now. Because we believe that the, the predictions of, of what's happening have, have an element of truth to it, that there is a crisis occurring right now. And that crisis is something that this movement has to address. That is, we can't put off our necessary preparation because somebody's put a date that's, you know, eight years into the future. And so, oh, you know, I got a lot of time, right? It, it is actually an immediate message. because it addresses issues at the present time. But also we don't know what it means as, as far as an actual date or an event. We just know what it means symbolically to this movement, that it's, it's something that showed up in the week of Christ study. It shows up in this structural chiasm based on the story of Joseph, showing the two 2520s. Um, so it's another way of presenting the 2520. And it's tied with the symbols of this movement. And so in order to understand 2030, what, what I proposed and what this study has been about, though we haven't really got deeply into it because I want to take my time with it. And, and part of it is me reading quite a bit, um, though I'm a little bit torn because there's so many things that I'm studying. But as we look at 2030 and we look at the World Economic Forum and we look at the pandemic and we look at where this world is going to, one thing we can say is that the World Economic Forum is a childish organization with juvenile ideas, has no concept of economics and no concept of reality, really. And yet it's comprised of powerful men and um, we can see that whatever their plans might be, they're not the plans that we have to worry about. There's other plans that are, are to be our concern. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at what these plans are, because they are tied together. That is, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet uh, will be united. And when they are united, it is possible that some of these dreams that uh, the people, if you want to call them that, at the World Economic Forum have, uh, they might be uh, at least partially realized because of their association with both the US and with the papacy. And so the persecution of God's people at that time, whatever that is, whether it's 2030 or you know 2025 or 2026 or 2023, however it, it comes about and whenever it comes about, um, we, need to, we need to have our understanding of what is involved. And, and the biggest issue that comes, you know, when we start looking at 2030 and we'll look at this tomorrow, is really the psychological element. What is going on? So my view, and, and this is not a popular view in this movement, but my view is that conspiracy theories are part of the conspiracy. That these are meant to discredit those who oppose what is happening. And that they were not created. These conspiracy theories, the theories themselves, are intentional on the part of these. That is, there is a conspiracy, but you are being caught and drawn into that conspiracy when you buy into the conspiracy theories that are based upon nonsense, that is, things that are not true. People don't like me using the word nonsense, but they are. That is, the things that Klaus Schwab believes and that his followers believe are, are basically juvenile fantasies. They're not something that, that exists in reality. They may wish them to exist, and they may believe that these things will exist in the future. 
but they're not going to be able to bring about an economy uh, that is is controlled in the way that they want but they are going to be able to destroy what exists whether they're doing it wittingly or unwittingly these plans of the world economic forum to me are part of those plans to destroy society And there's a psychology involved in that. That is, this may not be popular, but the Canadian truckers um, and the people who followed that, even though I would admire these people for what they were doing, they were fighting a battle they can't win. And they were political. Is our role as Seventh-day Adventists to be caught up in politics would we no. be would we be financially supporting the the truckers? Is that something a Christian would do? No, no, right? Even if we can sympathize with them, we would recognize that the methods that they're using are entering on to enchanted ground. They're fighting the wrong battle on the wrong battlefield. We wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, against, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and, and wickedness in high places, right, which is satanic. And the only way that we can beat that battle is with spiritual weapons, with the sword of the spirit, the word of God, the helmet of salvation, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the girt about with the belt of truth, and having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If we take up these weapons, we can defeat the enemy. But that's the weapons of the gospel. And so often we get caught up in what's happening around us and we start to think like the world. And we have the fear of what's coming upon the world, which we should have no fear of. And we shouldn't be uh, angry and we shouldn't be standing in rebellion against what's happening. We should have a peace and a joy and that we should cooperate with Christ in his work that he's doing to convert individuals. Our battle is a spiritual one and we need to be studying God's word and sharing God's word. And it may seem ineffectual especially as we see this movement, movement fractured in the way that it is. But we need to be aware that there's this battle going on for your mind and that when you get caught up in conspiracy theories, Satan is winning that battle in your mind. I know that may seem harsh to some, but I believe it's, it's the reality. But we're looking at not a conspiracy theory here. That is, we addressed before um, uh, last Friday um, some of the conspiracies regarding the vaccine itself and their unscientific basis. That is, uh, what was presented in that article in Natural News was basically gobbledygook. That is, it was taking completely disparate scientific ideas and putting them together as if they're interrelated, which they're not. Um, but to the person who's not familiar with the science, it sounds very convincing. You know, that you get the injection and a little transmitter is, is assembled inside of your blood and now they can, uh, you know, control you in some way, right? And a lot of these things are inconsistent and contradictory uh, to the other conspiracy theories. That's one of the interesting things about conspiracy theories. So either they're changing your DNA or they're putting a transmitter in you. But why would they be doing both? <coughs> and how are any of them scientifically tenable or practical in any sort of sense? It, it's not even a logical way to bring about things. And plus, God would protect us from those things. Can't we take up serpents and not worry about being bitten?
Isn't that one of the promises? Mm -hmm. So we don't need to fear him that can destroy the body. What, what, our, what we need to fear is the sin that lies within our hearts. And that battle, uh, I believe, is, is, is um, set aside when we get caught up in the battles of the world. So, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's a warning that we all need to heed. It's not an easy thing to, um, you know, to talk about because it's not popular in this movement, but it's just a reality that we, we are, we, we need to get our focus upon what God has told us to do. And, and so we are going to look at these things, but we're not going to be, we're going to be partly exposing the, the crazy conspiracy theories regarding 2030, but there is just something that's not even a conspiracy theory. It's just the reality. They're telling us what they want to do. And that's not a conspiracy. Thank you, Suter. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? I think you made your point well. Okay. I know there's a lot of things to think about, as we, as always. Um, but tomorrow morning, you know, Dwight has his presentation, uh, which is not an easy presentation to, to take. Uh, it's a very direct message. Uh, to this movement, to us individually. And um, so that's going to be at 7.30 in the morning, Mountain Daylight Time. And then we have the study in the afternoon at 2. So so tomorrow's going to be busy. I still have lots to get ready for the study tomorrow afternoon as well. Okay, well, thanks, everyone. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very grateful for the light that you have been shining upon our path, that we can look back at the past and that the events that we are experiencing now reflect back upon those events and give light to them and that they shine forward to give light to our feet. We are so thankful in how you work, how we can look at Pope Pius VI and William Miller, the dark day, and, and all of these events, and see your hand, that we can see right now where we are. So we pray for each person that you can give us strength to keep our feet upon the path, to walk in the light of the midnight cry, and that you can continue uh, to work upon the hearts of those in this movement and that you can give us patience and wisdom and skill in leading others to you. Help us ourselves to know you personally and to address the issues in our lives that we have neglected and hidden. Be with us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>